all I'm looking for right now. Okay, so it's pretty cool because half of the lesson, the hard part of the lesson, we already knew what to do. So let's scooch over for this one. What's the y-intercept in this equation right here? Zero. So I'm going to start at the origin, right? The slope of this line is what? Negative two-thirds. And that negative two-thirds, be careful, tells us to do what? You're going to rise down two and run right three from your zero, zero. I don't really need this part. This is a guided part that might be a good review, but we don't need it. So I need to graph the line less than negative two-thirds. So where am I beginning? From there, where am I moving? You just told me up here. Go down to right three. Pick up your ruler, but be careful. Don't just go and, especially if I'm doing it in marker, because this one's got to be what? Can the solution be on the line? Nope. It has to be less than the line. So I'm going to do dotted line. I'm going to take it all the way out to the edge of my graph. I have two areas. I have to decide where do I shade. This symbol means it's got to be less than the line. So don't look at it as left and right. Shade what? Above or below. And less than means below. So what am I looking for? When I check to make sure you know what you're doing, I'm looking to make sure your points, your line is actually plotted correctly. And then I'm looking to see if, if um, it's shaded in the correct area. I'll get the extras in a minute. So now I want you to take a look at number one. Now I got to show you a few more and then we're done. So take a look at number one. Where do you begin? Negative five. Kind of small grab, sorry. Where do you move from there? Up one, right three, good. Up one, right three. And I'll get, let you get rulers in a minute. Do you make this line solid or dotted? Can the solution be on the line? No. So you need to make this one dotted. I know, the graphs are small. That creates your two different areas. One might be bigger than the other. And where do I shade? Greater than means above. So I shade this in. This is really not bad, is it, guys? Okay. Do number two. Try number two on your own, and then, then we're going to... Number two. Try it. So for a lot of you, just remembering your slopes and how to graph a line might be tricky. So be careful. You have to know where your first two points are supposed to go. Can the solution be on the line? Yeah, it could be as long as it's less than or equal to the line. So this is going to be a solid one. There's your two areas. Which one do you shade? Don't say left or right, above or below. And when the lines get pretty steep, it really looks more like a left-right. But you can't look at it like that. Less than is below. All right, so I want to show you number um, four. So what's the first thing you notice about number four? Shoot, it's not ready to go. If it's in slope-intercept form, it's ready to go. I can't graph that. Because y is not solved for. So guess what all this blank space is for? For you to solve it. So what do you have to do first to get y by itself? Cancel out the x term. Please don't skip this step. Because a lot of you are messing your slopes up. 
because you're forgetting that it's the opposite sign when it gets to the other side. What is left? Less than. And I want to put my it. I know there's not a lot of room. Sorry. So that's what I have so far. And what am I about to do? Yes, I am about to divide by a negative four. So you have to put all of these pieces to this puzzle together now. And remember how to do like seven different tests that we've taken. You have to remember how to solve for y. You have to remember how to flip a sign. Because guess what? When I'm checking a test and the shading is supposed to be here, but you shade here, I know right away what you did. Oh, they forgot to flip the sign. Okay. And so now, what is this going to give you for your slope? Negatives cancel, and my slope is a positive one-fourth, and what's my y-intercept? Negative two. Now am I good to go? Yes. You see where we're going with this? You guys are smart. You got it. From negative two, where am I moving? Up one over four. Not a very steep line. Can the solutions that I'm about to graph exist on the line? No. They have to be greater than the line. So don't use a solid line. Go all the way out, and where do I shade? Less, or now it's a greater than, and because it's greater than, I shade above. Pretty easy. Good. Try number three. Actually, what I want you to do is just try to solve number three um, for y first. Don't graph it until you have confirmed with me that you have in fact solved it correctly. Because if you solve it incorrectly, you're gonna be guaranteed to not be able to graph it right. So solve it correctly for me first. Got a rate come small, sorry. Okay, you with me? I'm about to divide by a negative. Okay, did you get to that point? Did you get a y-intercept of negative six? Yes. Did you get a slope of positive five halves? Yes. And did yes. you flip the sign? Only then will are you <laughs> ready to plot your points correctly. So I'm gonna start all the way down at negative six. Where am I going from there? Up five over two. Am I using a solid or a dash line? Right, dash line. Go all the way out. I got two more to show you after this one. We're done. Where is, ah, this is the perfect example because it's kind of steep, it's positive, and somebody, I guarantee you, is going to look at that sign and read it as a less than sign and shade to the left. That is not right because it's not left and right. It's above and below. And so it's really counterintuitive. It means it goes against what you think that the shading is actually there. Do you know what I mean? That's like screaming left, left. No, it's above and below. And if you can get that, you're good. Okay, we're going to scooch down to seven and eight and then I am going to be done. What do you notice about seven and eight? Yes. Are you like so, are you, is that in your brain by now? The horizontal and vertical? All these up here, they have an X and a Y. They have an X and a Y. Every single one of these lines has got some kind of tilt to it. None of these are horizontal or vertical. But these two are. So you have to remember by now which one's which. H-O-Y, right? Horizontal lines. Have a slope of zero, and those are the y ones. 
So watch. Graph, what does y equals negative 4 look like? If I just asked you to graph y equals negative 4, you would do this, wouldn't you? There you go. y equals negative 4. There's my graph. But this isn't y equals negative 4. I want to know where on this graph are all the numbers less than that line. Well, this one's pretty darn easy because there's a definite above and below. It's below. So you're going to shade with your solid line right here. That was easy. Now, I kind of lied to you a little bit about this whole above below thing. I want you to graph what y, actually be careful because can, I, can it be on this line? No, so I have to go to the x axis at seven. I have to make a dotted line, a dotted vertical line. And then, what did I just say five, 10 minutes ago? Don't ever think of it as left and right. But we know when you have an x equals, what's the definition of that slope? It's undefined. It's, there's something so wrong about it, it doesn't even get a definition. Undefined means you don't even get a definition. So all rules are out the window with undefined. So now you do kind of have to look at it as left and right. Agreed? There is no above and below this line. So what would your instinct here be to graph all the numbers that are greater than 7 to the right? So this is the one time that you do get to kind of look at it as above and below. Does that make sense? Okay, the last thing I'm going to do before I give you some practice is this. I need you to understand what this means. If I take away, actually, if I were to give you number... I don't know. Let's keep it easy. If I were to give you this graph right here and say, is the point 9 comma 4 a solution? Well, you would be like, uh, yeah, duh. It's in the shaded region. Because I'm seeing it. And I would say, explain how you know. And you, you would say, because I'm seeing it with my eyeballs. That's how I know. But if I don't give you a graph and I just give you a question, that says, hey, I got this graph, and it's y is greater than 7. Do you think the point 9 comma 2 would be in there? This one's kind of weird. So I'm looking at the x value. Is the x value, girls over there, could you be quiet while I'm talking, please? Thank you. Is the x value greater than 7? Yeah. Meaning when I put that in there, 9 is greater than 7, it works. What about for this one? Y is less than, actually I want to do this one. Okay. Um, zero, negative two. Okay, hold on. And then I'm almost done. So you solve this one for me. Okay, that's the equation you got. Um, and I want to know if the point zero, negative two is a solution. I'm not going to let you see the graph. I know you have it in front of you, but. So if I say, is that a solution, what do you have to do? You have to put the y in for the y, the x in for the x, and see if it's true. What's 0 times anything? 0. What's 0 minus 2? Is 0, is negative 2 less, greater than negative 2? No. Negative 2 is negative 2. So is this true or false? False. So is 0, negative 2 a solution? No. Guess what? Let me show you something. That was this graph. Where is 0, negative 2 on this graph? Right there. What kind of a line is it? Dashed. So I have a lot of kids forget about that whole dash thing, and they say, oh, yeah, it's on a line. It's a solution. But that line is not a solid line. Do you understand? So this is what graphing inequalities looks like. Same thing as B and M with a little dashed or solid, above or below. That's all there is to it. Okay, so now we're going to practice this.